Greetings, this is Jeff Johnson, creator of WeatherMaker. I'm here to demo the new weather zone features new in WeatherMaker 4. Let's get started. In WeatherMaker versions prior to version 4, you had the Weather Manager, which is a fairly complex way to create random weather. It involved a lot of dragging around things, creating graphs to manage the transition and it was kind of complicated and not very intuitive. So I've scrapped that in WeatherMaker 4 and I've switched to a concept of weather zones, weather profile groups, and I think this is going to be a much better workflow for everyone, more powerful, and it's going to integrate much nicer with tools like Vegetation Studio, which already has a concept of biomes that just simply attach a biome profile to a collider so I've used a similar strategy here where I attach a weather zone to a collider. Let's take a look at this scene here. I've got two weather zones. I've got the temperate zone root which has the mesh collider and mesh for this grass texture which is the length of this entire scene. I have a snow zone here and it also has a mesh collider with a mesh that's drawing this kind of snowy quad here. Inside of both of these I have the weather zone, so the temperate weather zone is the size of the entire scene. Inside of the temperate zone is the snow zone, which is actually just this half here. So you can nest weather zones, that's totally fine. You don't have to, but you can, and it will transition seamlessly. As you move in and out of zones, it will push and pop the weather profile seamlessly. Let's go ahead and take a look at these profiles here. So in the snow zone, let's take a look at this script. I've assigned the snowy profile. You can also assign a single profile, so if you just wanted to have rain or a storm or something else, you could assign this single profile and it would just stick with that profile and nothing else. So that's an option if you want kind of a quick, simple weather type. Let's say you have a map that's always raining, you could just drag in some rain there and be done with it. But if you want automatic weather, which probably most people do, then you'll want to use the profile group. Uh, the weather zones have a concept of overrides, so on the weather zone, if you set any of these overrides, it will apply your override over the top of any profile. Let me show you what that means. So let's go into this temperate profile. It also has a concept of overrides. If you set any of these overrides, for example, in the snow profile here, I've overridden the sound profile to be nothing. So there will never be ambient sounds in the snow profile. In the temperate profile, you do have sounds. So if I look at this temperate profile and say I look at light clouds, We've actually got a sound profile here in the light clouds profile. There's a lot, it's a lot of nesting here. Uh, it takes a little bit to get used to, but once you understand it, it's a very, very powerful, flexible system to customize your weather profiles. So you can see that the light clouds included an ambient sound profile. But if you go all the way back to the snow profile, we've got the override here which says, you know what, I don't care if any profiles have specified sounds, I'm going to use this sound profile none, which basically wipes out all the sounds for the profiles in the snow profile group. And that's basically because I don't think you should have birds chirping while there's a blizzard going on, or even if it's really snowy, you're probably not as likely to have birds chirping. But this is configurable by you. If you want to have, allow ambient sounds in the snow zone, you can just null out that sound profile. So anything that is null, where it says none, will not be overridden. And the same thing for these transition durations. You can pick the transition and hold duration for each profile. You can override it for the profile group, and then you can override it for the weather zone itself. So there's three layers of overriding, which is huge amount of customization possibility. Alright, there's one more thing I need to explain before I run the scene and show you how this works, and that is the concept of your player. So a player in WeatherMaker has a camera and an audio listener that is active. So when WeatherMaker is looking at weather transitions and weather zones and colliders, it expects you to have a camera 
with an audio listener and it's very important to have a sphere collider that's a trigger you can make it really tiny and then sometimes unity won't do trigger enter events properly so you need to have a rigid body you can just assign it to be kinematic and that way it won't affect the physics in your scene now I've already got this player object from the demo resources folder right here and it's already set up everything for you but if you want to use your own player controller you'll need to make sure you've got your audio listener sphere collider as trigger rigid body and then finally there's this weather maker sound zone script if you assign this weather maker sound zone script to your player the same object with the audio listener then the weather zones will apply their sounds to this weather maker sound zone script so it's basically a way for the weather zones to apply global sound whenever the players in that weather zone so let's take a look at uh, the weather maker prefab we've got a new audio manager here on this audio manager you can control the volume and the ambient volume but we've also got a concept of a weather profile sound fade so what this does is it basically says when you leave or enter a weather zone how quickly should those sounds fade in and out so I've got it set to 0.25 so if I have a transition duration of 10 it would multiply that by 0.25 and that would be the fade time for these ambient sounds for the weather zone now if you hover over this you get a tooltip you can set it to zero and if you set that to zero then the weather makers uh, weather zones won't do the sounds it'll just ignore the sounds in whatever ambient sounds you have specified it'll just use those all the time but this is a really nice powerful feature so I highly suggest you leave this as is and you can specify your own ambient sounds for your weather zones okay I'm gonna go ahead and run this and you can see the weather zones in action now right now I'm in the temperate zone and we've just transitioned to the clear weather you can hear the ambient sound of the birds I'm gonna run over to the snow zone now and the ambient sounds will fade out so now I'm in the snow zone where there's no ambient sounds allowed if you remember back earlier from our override we weren't allowing those ambient sounds now we're transitioning to just some light snow here and now as I move over back into this other zone we're transitioning to temperate weather again. Now I haven't specified any transition duration and hold duration, so everything is just setting to 10 seconds, which is pretty fast, great for testing, not so great for your game. So if you want some more realistic transitions, just go into your weather zones and set something like 100 or 200 for these min and max values. Now I'm going to run over back into the snow zone and even though it's a clear profile I'm not getting ambient sound and remember that's again because I've overridden the sound in the snow zone to be none even that in the temperate zone a profile clear would have ambient sounds but not in the snow zone so let's show you what happens with these overrides I'm going to change the snow zone transition duration to 13 and now that I've set that as I go into the snow zone you can see that we're going to transition with those new transition durations. So take a look at the next transition that comes in. We're hitting 13 and 13. Whenever you move from zone to zone, it's going to transition a little more quickly, and that's because if you transition from a blizzard to a temperate zone, it wants to get rid of that blizzard a little bit faster. So as you go into the temperate zone, you'll see the transition happen a little bit faster than normal. Instead of a 10, it was a 5. And then as I go into the snow zone, you can see that it's transitioning quicker. And now it's transitioning to yet a new profile, which is the blizzard, and using the full transition duration because I'm already in the zone. So let's quickly hop out of here. So now I'm in the temperate zone and it's more quickly getting rid of that blizzard because I doesn't want a blizzard in the temperate zone. And if that, I hope that makes sense. Basically as you move in and out of zones the first transition will happen a little bit quicker uh, just to get that weather out of there and into the new zones weather. So it'll last a little bit but it'll transition twice as fast. 
All right, so basically to sum up, WeatherMaker 4 has a concept of weather zones. Now, weather zones need a collider, and they need either a profile group set or a single profile. And they're great to integrate with tools like Vegetation Studio and the new Unity post-processing stack version 2. For example, on the Snow Zone Collider, I could add a post-processing volume and I could do some color grading and some various things to make things look a little bit colder. I'll probably add some of that as I drop support for earlier Unity versions, but right now I support Unity 5.6.6 and newer and some of those older versions don't yet support the new post-processing stack. So look for that kind of integration and setup in future WeatherMaker versions. I'll be attaching post-processing volumes most likely to the WeatherMaker profiles or weather zones by default. Thank you for watching so much. I really appreciate your time. Please send me an email to support at digitalruby.com if you have any questions. I would love to help. Appreciate any and all feedback, and I really hope this helps make your project in-game really awesome. Have a wonderful day.